Thank you, Sam. Uh, and before we actually get today's program started, I want to let everybody know that I will save you $150 a year on your car insurance. You can save that premium by switching over to my new company, the Good Gecko Coverage Company. Now, a little advertisement there doesn't hurt. Uh, certainly nobody was deceived by that, except for the fact that do I know I can save you $150 a year? I absolutely don't. I can't guarantee you that I'm going to save you, uh, or certainly not everyone, up to $150 or that $150 that I said. So it depends on the conditions. Well, that's kind of what we're going to talk about today. Uh, when we begin to look at UDAP and focus on things that are unfair or deceptive, there's going to be essentially two issues that we're going to focus on. One is going to be advertising. And the second, which is where we're beginning to see what I would call the emerging UDAP issues, are going to be fees. And it's not just fees that are derived from some key products that are advertised, but uh, any kind of fee or any kind of deceptive practice where the bank may have said one thing but is in fact doing another. We're going to dig into these into some, into some pretty good detail uh, in this presentation today, uh, but suffice it to say that regulators have increased their enforcement of UDAP uh, as a result of banks violating their own deposit agreements with consumers, with customers. Uh, and they're simply saying that you told the customer one thing, but you did another. And they're using these, these particular rules uh, as that arrow in their quiver in order to inflict uh, civil money penalties on the financial institution, which evidently was doing wrong because it wasn't doing what it was saying, uh, but they're choosing this arrow instead of the regulation uh, that would be more applicable. And, and the case in point that we'll discuss is going to be Regulation E uh, as an example because Reg E requires certain disclosures for overdrafts. It requires that you do certain things under the electronic funds transfers, claims investigations, uh, and institutions would be doing something different. And as a result, uh, they would get a UDAP penalty rather than a Reg E penalty. So that's the new facet of UDAP that we have to worry about today. Now, one of the questions that will be asked is, well, is it UDAP with one A or two? And in my mind, I'll tell you that on my computer, I now have Reg AA dash UDAP with two A's because you can discuss the extra A, the abusive side of it that Dodd-Frank added to it. Uh, but the penalties come under Section 5 of the FTC, which is 1A UDAP, um, and it's simply, I don't, I don't draw a distinction between the two anymore. I just put everything into one essential file folder uh, because that's the easiest way to handle it because they are sharing definitions, they are sharing enforcement actions, uh, and whether you call it UDAP or UDAP with an extra A, it doesn't matter. So we're going to be referring to it today as, as UDAP. And, uh, in the program, we're going to define UDAP with 1A, and then we're going to talk about adding that second. But again, uh, in your mind, in your desktop files, I would encourage you to say we're going to put those things together. We are going to be discussing those in not a huge amount of detail, because I want to try and make sure we have time to discuss the enforcement cases, because that's where the rubber meets the road, and that's where we're going to see how examiners are using this now. Some of the cases we're going to look at are going to be 10 years old. Does that mean that it's not applicable anymore because it's 10 years old? No. You might say, I wouldn't even in banking 10 years ago. doesn't matter. The rules were written, and some of the key enforcement actions were written back then. Uh, one of the issues that we have is when we don't have a huge amount of guidance, we have to look at enforcement actions and cases in order to learn what are the regulators thinking, what is it that they're keying in on, so that we can better understand, am I doing something that might be wrong? Am I doing something that might be misconstrued? Uh, and I need to be able to tweak that and to straighten it out. Uh, so the enforcement actions will help us with that. In some cases, though, we simply have uh, very a very limited amount of information. Here's an enforcement action. 
this is what it was pertaining to, advertising of credit products, and they got fined $15,000. So we're going to look at some of those, and sometimes we have to try and infer what we can. Sometimes we look for additional media information that may exist, uh, and sometimes the examiners are very forthgiving and saying, this is what the problem is. Now, some of you will say, well, UDAP with 1A is Reg AA, and UDAP with 2As is big bank problems. Well, it's not necessarily big bank problems because, again, I've already said that they share definitions, they share enforcement actions, they come together. Uh, the FDIC recently produced some information and, and essentially indicated that UDAP affects banks of all sizes, especially, and I'm going to say especially, including small community banks. Uh, it's a common misconception that the, the bigger banks, which are the ones that we hear about getting fined, uh, are the big guys. Again, you'll see some small fines. You'll see some banks that you'll say, well, I don't recognize the name of that bank. You'll recognize Discover. You'll recognize J.P. Morgan Chase. You'll recognize Bank of America. Uh, but you may not recognize Wolcott or Merkel. Uh, those are where you get into some smaller banks. Uh, and, in fact, UDAP applies, some people think it applies to large credit card type banks and, and big automated overdraft pro programs. Since 2008, 43% of the UDAP violations that the FDIC cited were for banks that are $250 million or under in asset size. 43%, almost half, were for very small community banks. Uh, that to me tells you that it's not just a big bank issue. Also, uh, UDAP violations resulted in unsatisfactory CRA ratings, downgraded consumer compliance ratings, as well as restitution to consumers and civil money penalties. Uh, again, through the enforcement actions, we're going to see some of these refunds that are required and civil money penalties, but you don't hear about other effects that a UDAP penalty may have had, such as uh, downgrading somebody's uh, CRA rating. That can, in some senses, uh, be significant. Now, not included in your materials is information on the Bank of America UDAP uh, citation that was listed last week. Uh, I guess it came out last week. It was actually from the 7th, uh, as I recall. But I want to first look at that as we start to talk about uh, UDAP today, uh, we're going to envision, not, we're going to have to explain what UDAP is with 1A, with 2As. We're going to look at some of the compliance considerations. We're going to talk about the enforcement actions and the sample complaint policy uh, because complaint policies tie into this highly. So we're going to include some discussion on that. But before I get into that, I'm going to slice and dice a little bit on this consent order with Bank of America. So uh, I don't have a slide on this. I want you to be able to sit back and listen to it. Then you'll understand as we start going through uh, the definitions for Reg AA and what's going to be abusive. You'll have a better understanding of where this comes from. So we're going to start out with a little bit of an, of an enforcement action. Now, again, this was announced a week ago, just a little over a week ago, where Bank of America was going to have to pay. Now, of course, Bank of America is the big bank. Uh, but again, I just got done telling you that the FDIC said, you know, 43% of the banks that they hit are small banks. So think that this could perhaps apply to you. Uh, the fines probably would not be as huge. B of A is going to have to pay $800 million in refunds, $800 million uh, in refunds. These are fines for what was deemed to be uh, improper or illegal credit card promotion and billing practices. That $800 million includes $700 million in refunds to Bank of America customers. This is for billing practices that go from 2000 to 2011. So B of A had already stopped dealing, doing the, the practices that they were hit for here. Uh, these practices went for an 11-year period. In many cases, when you look at compliance violations, you go from exam to exam. Well, if they didn't cite it in the last exam, it must be okay. Well, UDAP is not that way. So they got hit for an 11-year practice 
$800 million 